Hoi, welkom bij Buckets TV. Leuk dat jullie allemaal kijken. Vandaag op een heel bijzondere locatie. Hier in Rotterdam, bij Panenka, bij de officiële release van NBA 2K17. En natuurlijk met de grote man uit Amerika, Mr. Rob Jones. Welcome in the Netherlands. Hey, thank you. Well, um, 2K17 has been known for a while now as the best sports game out there, the best platform. I mean, how does it feel to have established that prominence and what does it take to get there? I, you know, I think it takes, uh, I always say it's hard work. It takes a passion for, that, for the sport and for the game that, um, that our team kind of seems to prove year in and year out that we are, we are truly lovers of what we're doing. Yeah, it's great. You can tell from the game. I mean, it just the passion just hits you right in the face when you start playing the game. The graphics, I mean, they're so next level. And it, you just recognize players when you look at graphics. Did you have players come in and do the animations? Was it hard to have players work with you guys? No, no, no. I mean, we, we do a mixture. You know, we have uh, some of the players come in usually during the year and we'll do a few of their animations, uh, more of their signature type stuff. And then we use a lot of college players that, that either people who've played and no longer play in the league or college players who are professionals around the world whose movement kind of embodies what we're looking for when we're looking at an NBA player. And how excited are players when, when they recognize themselves in games? Or do you get any feedback from players on their ratings and whatnot? Uh, we get feedback on their ratings all the time. That's a, that's a guarantee. I mean, nobody's ever really happy with what they get. They're never good enough, huh? No, no, you know, you know people sit there and say, my J's better than that. You just haven't, you know, you just haven't seen it yet. And we're like, yeah, that's the problem. We haven't seen it yet. <laughs> we have a show us and what, we might put it in there. So, um... You know, so we and we get feedback from players who spend a lot of time playing the video game. You know what they like, what they don't like, and we try to, you know, we try to use some of that feedback alongside of the feedback of our community to make a better experience for everyone. Yeah, I hear you, because I guess there must have been a community uproar when a lot of people saw Kobe Bryant's rating last year. Yeah, you know, it's a it, the, the 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 community's vocal. Let's put it that <laughs> way. <laughs> Hey, how about the artificial intelligence? Have you guys made any steps in artificial intelligence, and, and how can we notice that? Uh, there's a ton. I mean, you know, the, the, the AI is way smarter than it ever has been before. We've done a thing this year. Um, you know, the AI makes continuous adjustments based on how they're, you're, they're playing you or you're playing them. Uh, and then the great thing about it is that as you bump the difficulty level up, we're actually making the AI be smarter about making adjustments. So whereas before people just thought that the players just got better, now the AI will make more adjustments to what you're doing against them as you make the game um, tougher. We also, you know, we, we did a lot of stuff. We rewrote, um, we rewrote a lot of the freelance systems. We've, uh, there's over 30 freelance systems in the game now. For, for different teams, so different teams will feel, um, um, you know, very unique, you know. So you have that uh, transition is something that we spent a lot of time in, so both offensively and defensively. Transition game has been rewritten to make it more fluid, and that's something that you should feel the moment you play the game is how, how much better the game flows in terms of both offense and defense. And players react, like, immediately to buttons and... They just the whole feel is a lot better from what I understood. It is. I mean, the you know on the control side, you know we're going to a lot of one-to-one -one control, one one-to-one -one feel. What I do is what I see right there on the screen. Um, we're trying to make sure that you know, like we were talking about before, that if I'm the same rating as you, but I'm more skilled player, you know, we want to surface that. We want that person to feel like he's a better 2K user than the other guy. So there's. Um, There's been a lot done, both, you know, the AI side. When you, when you say AI, for me, a lot of times I'm thinking of how the game approaches games against me. And then also from the gameplay control side in terms of, you know, how do you interact with the game. It's, you know, it, we've done things that supposedly make it harder, but they're just as accessible as before. And it's something that, you know, we, we strive for every year because, you know, our game is pretty big. It is. It's amazing. And how about AI with teammates? I mean, it, it, I'm a big Laker fan. I would love to get drafted with my, my career mode into the Lakers. And one of the most frustrating things with, was seeing the ball go into the black hole known as Kobe Bryant. 
Now, is that is that still there, or <laughs> is that still there, or has that developed or evolved? Well, I mean, you know, obviously the AI wouldn't be the coach wouldn't be smart if he didn't play the ball to who's supposed to be his best player. Um, but you know, we keep doing work to make sure that your experience alongside your teammates gets you know gets more improved and gets you more engaged. Clearly, so playing with LeBron James will get you more opportunities as a teammate. Yeah, no, I mean, LeBron James obviously is a very unselfish player, so what you'll see from him is probably quite different than what you saw from Kobe or Carmelo. That's so. That's the first time I've heard that. Hey, how about Le Kobe's on the Legend cover this year? I mean, clearly he, he went out with a bang 60-point game. Have you guys done anything with him in the, in the game as far as his uh, big goodbye tour or whatever? Does he have a role in the game? Well, he, he's he got... Uh, different roles that he he took on when he uh when you know when we decided to make that legends game there's no mode specific to him but there's a lot of cameos in different areas that are just you know little little kobe you know anecdotes that's fantastic looking forward to that how about my career mode i mean my career mode is is basically the mode when it comes to nba 2k right i mean that's you must get a ton of feedback on my career yeah you know i mean and every year we try to take that feedback and try to create a mode that's even more engaging and more fun than the year before. We've taken stabs at different things. I mean, last year we made a movie, yeah. you know, and before we had done it, you know, we had done it differently. But all of uh, all of what we're trying to do is create a kind of a, a an adventure, an RPG type experience that makes the 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 part of just playing game after game feel like you're doing something to achieve a particular an, an end goal but yeah you know like you're right um you know my career games played are way more than uh regular games in any other mode now it's crazy because you get so into the game and i i i, I turn off my ps4 and i feel like i'm six nine like this is actually me doing this stuff i mean that's how far this game goes that's amazing and that's what we wanted you know we want people to be in, involved in playing and always thinking about their their guy at all times so definitely hey another uh, mode uh, people are really high on is my gm uh tell us a little bit about developments in my gm and how that has partaken this year well, I mean, my GM uh, this year isn't as big of a focus as the stuff that we did in my leagues. But, you know, all of it, you know, the, the, the beauty about my GM, my league, and even my career and the way they're intertwined, a lot of the stuff that we find exciting, like the league expansion feature that we talked about earlier, all of those automatically get wrapped, run into my GM. So the mode itself is always expanding because – the moment we put a new feature in to any of the simulation side, you automatically get it for free when you're playing in my gym. So that world feels more alive to you as a as a user. That's amazing. Looking at, at my gym, a couple of things that were maybe the annoyance, let's call it that, or the, the development of a salary cap going in, into my gym or my league. It was very hard to to keep players because there was no cash. With the new salary cap, has that been implemented into the game? Yeah, all of the stuff, uh, you know, like like we were saying before, um, you know, salary adjustments, the, the, the collective bargaining agreement, and when those things change, those are all taken into consideration. So your salary cap will keep growing, uh, you know, accordingly. Therefore, you will be able to, to make space for those players that you need. Yeah, because I need to keep them, man. I, I train these guys. I need to keep them on my team. Hey, another thing is the draft classes. You were able to import draft classes. Now, there are a lot of guys who are notoriously known for building own draft classes. Thank you to those people because they help all the players in the community out. But how about the automated draft classes? Have you guys focused on that, maybe improved some of it? Because it was hard to get new good players into the leagues. And that's, you know, and that's feedback that we get, you know. And those, you know, for the most part, those are, are, are bugs that weren't caught, you know. It's like somebody didn't, didn't really go out of their way to stress test that, that very uh, strongly. So, but usually whenever something like that surfaces from the, co from the community, we automatically get on those things early. So, you know, I think that that's one of those things that they address for sure. Yeah, I can definitely tell you guys do a lot with the community. You take feedback and you try to implement it into the next game. Um, looking at something that the online community did, the whole My Park and Road to the Finals thing last year, I, what, from what I understood, it was huge. How was the feedback on that? The feedback was, you know, it was really good. There was things that, you know, they didn't like, you know. Uh, but when you look at 
the overall feedback when that tournament went on, it was absolutely crazy. And I'm not talking about just the final. I'm talking about the, the day that that everybody was online playing each other and, you know, we were sitting there in this war room just watching games be played. You know, it's it's been a long time dream of mine to get to a point where, you know, me and my buddies could all go out and compete together against somebody else with their team. And so to see that come come to life and see how excited people are and how, you know, how these teams were built with strategies, you know, do, play, playing a specific way in order to, you know, for to reach that over that end goal, you know, that that's kind of special. I hear you definitely. How about the climax idea? How many people do you have playing at the same time? Uh, well, we on the sixth when we did the big tournament to find out which two teams, you know, they started off with uh, how many games was it? Uh, 16, 32 games going at once, you know, and then that, that that kind of just narrowed itself down throughout the game. But it was awesome. I mean, absolutely awesome. You're sitting there, and, um, you know, we had all these monitors down, and then, you know, there's this big screen, and we could switch to the game that we thought was the most important, almost like watching March Madness. That's amazing, man. You, you must be looking back, looking at that as a proud father. I mean, that's your baby. You created this, and that's it's it's definitely one of those things where um, I'm really excited to see. You know, where can we go with that type of stuff? That's fantastic. Um, the post pre-game shows with Kenny, with Shaq, and and with Ernie. Amazing work. I mean, those guys just sitting there. You can tell the chemistry. What was amazing to me was looking at the game. You could just tell the chemistry between them because it was all three of them taping it at the same time and doing the animations. Did you guys take that to another level, or did you keep it the same way? Uh, we, we've done more. You know, we always do more in every in every little area. So, you know, again, this year we've, we, we've done more with them. Um, We've also done a lot of more dynamic stuff, so it'll, it'll be kind of cool when people start seeing, you know, where we've gone with it this year and, and, and see what their feedback is. That's great. I'm going to use Madden, the new Madden, as an example. I mean, it's a different, uh, obviously different game and whatever, but they have this commentary that gets uh, redone weekly or uh, uploaded weekly. You guys consider this as something you're doing or plan on doing? Uh, no, we haven't, you know, it's not something that, Right now, we had planned on. I mean, this year, you know, we took on that whole thing of, of getting the dynamic commentary um, crews, so you know, so that you're actually getting more than just the the, the two guys that we've always had. Mm -hmm. You know, now you're going to have um, commentators kind of come join in just when they're when a game is being played in their in their area. So, you know, we are trying to figure out ways to expand and change what we're doing with commentary. I mean, this year, um, you know, that was already huge, you know, creating these dynamic commentary um, um, crews. But then on top of that, we did all that work with, you know, crowd reactions and sounds and things like that. So, you know, uh, depending on, you know, how that, that feature turns out, you know, I think that we're always trying to see if we can be the, you know, how can we stay the best at what we do? Stay number one. That's the biggest goal, I guess. Yeah, adding Chris Webber to the Kings, I mean, that's just, it doesn't get a lot better than that, right? How yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, and he's kind of always there. So it's like if you go to those games, you see that you see him hanging out there and, and commentating, so. That's great. Hey, you're in Europe right now. I mean, um, basketball is the NBA. It's American. We all know it's huge over there. It's getting bigger in Europe. But how do you guys, I mean, how big is your part in the European market? You're, you're sharing the European market. And how do you guys expect to grow this in the next coming years? Well, I mean, you know, you've seen us uh, have different initiatives. I mean, you know, obviously we have the Euro League uh, that's, that's built into the game. You know, we know that the NBA comes and brings game, you know, comes and plays actual games over here. So they're just as strong at building their brand over here as we're at building the game. And so as their as their brand just grows um, as it has, you know, exponentially, we we will reap from it. And then just the fact that we're such a great fun game, you know, will also be something that you know will keep pushing that that for us and then if there's you know other things that we can do to kind of get more people playing you know we're definitely going to do those i definitely hear you and i believe that it's not just people that love the nba to become 2k fans it works the other way around too yep.
kids to pick up the game and go like, you know what, this is a cool, this basketball might work for me. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it, Europe, from what I remember, has always had a kind of a different approach to to uh, to basketball, and a lot of it is, you know, you just don't have as many courts. No. You know, everybody has a hoop at in uh, in the U.S., so basketball is kind of ingrained as. You know that that number one or two sport to a lot of kids. Uh, here, you know, it's it's more like, hey, did you join a club or, or it's, it's kind of the only way you can really experience it. You're not experiencing it, you know, as pickup the way we do. So, um, but I think that you know, I think that our game is so much fun that people will watch, especially when they see how realistic the game actually looks. Definitely, and it's getting better with courts, though. I've been to Spain lately, and I mean, Spain has a lot of courts. You know, I haven't seen I haven't seen all the the new courts, so I, I'm, I'm I'm going tomorrow. So hopefully, I'll see some of them. I'm pretty sure you will enjoy yourself. Spain is nice. Hey, the game was downloadable for free in the PS PS Store for a month, I believe, last year. Was that a conscious decision, or was that just? I mean, did it just no, happen like that? No, no, no. I think um, you know that's that whole the whole PlayStation. Um, kind of deal that they have, the uh, places to access stuff. And, you know, for us it was great. I mean, it, it puts our game in the hands of some guys who fought, maybe didn't pick it up, and then suddenly they're finding out, wait, I missed out on this, and now that it's free, I know what it's about, so maybe this next one everybody's talking about is one that I'll run out and get. I'm 100% sure, because I had guys that had never played any basketball games hit me up like my cousin. It was like, yo, I played this game, and it was amazing. I might get it next year. <laughs> and well, that's and that's what you want, you know. It's like... This year, we're trying our best with the prelude to get it into people's hands early to see how much work goes in. I mean, it, they're not getting, they're not just getting some, you know, two-minute demo of a game. They're actually getting a complete piece of the my career experience with, you know, with scenes and with games. And they'll sit there and they'll be like, hey, you know what? I, you know, I should try, you know, I, I want to try this game when it comes out. So. Definitely. It comes out September 9th, the preload does. The game itself is a week later, yep. 17th, so 16th, so I apologize. So make sure to download, download it and get a head start on your game. This last question is give us just a little sneak peek at 2K18. I'm sure you, Mr. Jones, you've got your head spinning. You've been driving everybody crazy with your new ideas already going off. Give us one new thing that's going to uh, pop up. I, 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 we can't talk about 2K18. Is it too early? 2K17 hasn't even hit the stores. How are we going to start talking about 18? Yeah.